And that, ladies and gentlemen, there is... <laughs> My next guest is a fantastic actress. She's a great presenter. It's Lisa Tarbuck. <laughs> the lovely Lisa. Lisa. You look beautiful this evening. Thank you. Lisa is, of course, uh, doubly lucky, inheriting her gorgeous looks from her mother and a sense of humour from her mother. So... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you, you can sort me out when you get out. I will. Yeah. Uh, my next guests are genuine Hollywood superstars. They're here to promote their new film, Star Skin Hutch. It's Owen Wilson and Ben Stiller. <laughs> Good evening, fellas. You're looking great. Look at that. <laughs> and we've got some great live music for you tonight from the fantastic Star Sailor, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Tremendous band. What a green win that is. Look, we've got, we've got Star Skin Hutch. You got John Lydon in there as well, ah. uh, and a tarbuck. <laughs> it's like a chat show from the seventies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you're wearing a suit. <laughs> <laughs> He's off already. Come on. It's like the seventies though. Parkinson's at home having acid flashbacks, <laughs> and, and I believe he takes Rennies when he gets the acid flashbacks. <laughs> uh, before we get on with the show, uh, I was also uh, someone who's been a great source of inspiration and entertainment to me over the years. Before we bring him out, let's have a look at him. Here he is in action, then and now. Ladies and gentlemen, it's John Lydon. I'm not doing it, I'm going home. You don't want to hear it. They've got something ready for it. Hello, England. <laughs> you all look like your shop at Marks and Spencer's. <laughs> well, well, how are you? You look well. I'm alive, yeah. <laughs> and now here's surprise, isn't it? I need to congratulate you because who would have thought in the seventies when you were, you know, at the height of your, I suppose, fame and notoriety back then, you were being attacked in the street occasionally. You were being uh, suspected. Oh, now I'm attacked by ostriches. Well, I ain't doing too bad. But you kind of, you've kind of become the nation's favourite. You're like, uh, you're like. A, well, a, a, do you a, believe that? The cuddly housewife's favourite, John. Well, well, I don't know. Housewives have always had a penchant for me. <laughs> 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 but like a bad boy kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll be your backdoor Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't aimed at me, was it? No, you're Jonathan. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, but I was told that you, you have been... Uh, someone from the show went to see John before he came along, and he said, when he was there, loads of kind of like the older ladies were coming up going, it's you! Yeah. It's you, they're no, lovely. Yesterday, old age pensioners, one of them 99 years old, just telling me how gorgeous I was. <laughs> You know, hello, you've all gone rotten. <laughs> and that ain't no bad thing, is it? Oh, well, I'm all for it. Now, now, were you surprised that you became... I you, do you think a know... silly show like that would really mean very much at all. I mean, you know, I was splendid, of course, but... <laughs> <laughs> all I did was I went out there to have fun, yeah. right? And, and I'd, I've never done anything like camping or anything like that ever in my whole life. An industrial car park was the closest to nature I've ever been. It was a, a nice holiday in Finsbury Park. It, it was. It was like a, a working holiday, a busman's yeah. holiday, and I loved it. I fell in love with the wildlife, with all of it. And I didn't like the way the show was turning into some kind of opportunity celebrity knockout thing. Well, so, you know, I, I thought that's a little too disrespectful of the nature. The show would have been better, I thought, if they'd have let the ten of us kill each other. <laughs> you know, instead of, like, letting people vote uh, others out because the way it was edited it, there was an awful lot that I think was unfair and not shown like Mike Reed uh, you know most people think that he had no contribution whatsoever in that camp that's wrong he was partly responsible for all that terrible music that went on But because when, when he when was I kicked don't... out they interview everyone when people are voted out and everyone said he was great fun everyone missing yeah, no, and we hadn't was. seen it we thought he was dull he, he, no, is that because we weren't shown well he is dull but you know <laughs> 
he, he's less dull than that. Can I ask you something? What, one thing that struck me when watching was he appears to have quite nice breasts. Did yeah, you know they're like a lady's breast. Well, they were more like a lady's breast than Jordan's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless her. Bless her. You seem to get on well with Jordan, are you? She's all right, no problems. <laughs> uh, you know me, I just tell it like it is, and if, if that isn't appreciated, tough titties. Yeah. <laughs> Which apparently is also quite relevant. You know, I'll tell you one of the best moments with Jordan was when she was showing us her liposuction scars. I thought that was such oh, a turn on. No, I don't think... <laughs> we didn't get to see that. Did we get to see that on the she show? She had her bottom sucked out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the scars, they're just so ugly. I don't like all that facelift and attachment thing. I mean, you don't know what you're going to bed with, do you? <laughs> or you do. <laughs> but she did seem to really get on your nerves about halfway through, didn't she? Uh, laziness. That's, that's the thing that bug, bugged me with all of them. Just uh, sitting back and moaning for chocolate cake, you know. Well, sod it, it's only like, what, two weeks, lentils and rice, what's wrong with that? Yeah, exactly. And boiling water and lighting a fire. I thought that was all fantastic fun. Yeah. You know, and um, lucky me, first day ostriches, I mean, that's a booby prize, yeah. isn't it? But you, but you seem quite you know, nice. I, I thought you, you dealt with that. Well, you seem to quite almost enjoy the experience of being well, in there with them. I think it's something to do with my mum's budgie when I was young. <laughs> That's a big budgie then, isn't it? <laughs> a gang of them. It was like a Tottenham disco yeah. fighting off these really horrible birds <laughs> at big eyelashes. <laughs> yeah, like you ever fought off birds and in I a must, Tottenham I'm, disco. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but I must tell you, they have uh. such lovely, soft, feathery bottoms. <laughs> Are we talking about the disco again now? or no, the, actual... the ostriches, because oh, okay. one of them... I'd sat on my face at some point. <laughs> Here's what I was amazed by. You don't really know what's going on in the outside world, were you there, do you? Not at all. OK, but you seem to, to know that you were popular. You seem... Because you were... I think it surprised most people That's... that they liked you, they warmed to you, they found you entertaining, and they also... People were voting for you. You were the favourite, I believe, when you well, walked. I, I, I'm not aware of any of that. All I know is I was having fun and I couldn't care less. But you were saying, you in there, you said... And that's all you should do these things for anyway. I mean, it's fantastic. They paid me to go out and have a laugh. And yeah. I did, didn't I? <laughs> you know? And, and, and lo and behold, got a load of money bunged to some charities, you know? Uh, did, do, did you... Is that why you did it? You thought, OK, it's for charity, or have you been asked to do this kind of... No, before? they asked me to do this uh, last year. And they gave us, I think it's three weeks' notice. And, I, and I, I, I laughed it off and put it off. But when it came up this year and... I thought, what the hell, why not? I've got nothing better to do, you know, February, Australia, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yes please, all I've got to do is suffer the jungle. I'd, see, from the, the things I'd seen at the show before, I'd only seen uh, like half of one episode with Tony Blackburn, <laughs> right, which was no recommendation at all. <laughs> and, and the set looked to me like it was fake and hokey, yeah. that it wasn't really a jungle. So I was determined to go out there and pull it all apart. And I did. <laughs> it, what, the jungle's real enough, but there were a few things in it that, that bugged me. It, it's, it's really annoying to be on camera 24 hours a day. You know, that's why the first night in I decided to masturbate! <laughs> <laughs> and get that over with! I don't think we saw that. Did we see that? You see? Editing. <laughs> There was a bit of movement under the cover, but we assumed that there was some, oh, you know, like a... Yeah, yeah, well, there was lots of movement under the covers. I wow. mean, the, the camp, uh, it quickly became overran with rats, because, uh, you know, these were dirty celebrities I was with. <laughs> Didn't you used to be a rat catcher? Yeah, or a rat when killer? I was young, yeah. No, I'm not having rats running around me. <laughs> Those things, are, you know, they, they, they bring in the snakes, and, no, you know... No. What did they you make... You want to go to bed with a tie pan and yeah. two rats? Did you, did you warn anyone before you killed your first rat there, or did you just do it? I just do it okay. instinctively. So what did they think? Because they, they urinate in the food. Yeah, and I know. Stuff, I'm not you? knocking you for kill, killing the rat. I'm just, okay. You know. Well, the bit I was getting to was I wanted to skin them and eat them. <laughs> you know, just for a laugh to see if I could get a, like a rise out of it. And the moans that went up, and then over the loud hailer in the camp was, "No, John, the RSPCA will go <laughs> insane." <laughs> um, there was a moment which I loved in the show, which was when, uh, and because the show was live, of course, and there was a moment when Ant and Deck came into the the jungle and they said, "You haven't been voted out." 
Yeah. And, and there kind of aren't that many taboos left on, on TV. Oh, you know? there are now. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so good, Dad. No, it reminds you that like certain words in our language is being like considered as being naughty or banned. It, they're only words. You. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? I'm all for it. <laughs> um, but was that deliberate? Did you think, okay, did you go in the No, video, it, it wasn't sort of deliberate, and uh, they, they tried to make out I apologise later. I apologise for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh. like, you know, that was just straight off the top of my head. Damn you, you bastards, for not voting us out of this. Because uh, I love the jungle. I'd have, I'd have loved to have been there alone. I would, yeah. have, I would have done a month alone in that. But I couldn't stand the endless, endless whinging for chocolate cake and yeah. moaning. I mean, you sent in port wine and cigars and ginger jackets. Jonathan, that was a brilliant, brilliant I laugh. thought it was a nice gesture. I thought, give him a cigar, give him a glass, give him a smoking jacket, they can relax, get civilised. Perfect. No. They whinged, didn't they? They, they burnt me they in burnt effigy. You. Yeah. <laughs> now, how do you know I feel watching that home? And get this, they did that when my back was turned, so I was yeah. going to make life hell from there on in. He defended me. He's he my defended. only friend in this. Yeah. That's quite a beautiful moment there. <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> I love the word. I um, want you to. But why did you walk in the end? What, what, what did actually prompt you to walk from that show? Oh, look, the show was no longer live. There yeah. was a delay on, right? And they told us that. And I thought, fraudulent behaviour. There's a good excuse to run. But had you planned uh, there, going there was out? another thing too, is that my wife Nora, see she arrived while I was in the jungle and I specifically was told that they would tell me that she arrived safely because uh, there was a story in the papers a couple of weeks ago about the Lockerbie disaster. Yeah, we were booked on that and ever since then we, we like to know when we arrive in places and I thought it was a reasonable request and for them not to uh, come up and be fair with me on that you know, they got what they deserved. So my presume, backside. Presumably what you were angry about wasn't... Because you, you must have known that she was there safely, but then also obviously... No, I didn't. Have, they but, wouldn't tell me. But they would have told you if something bad had happened. That's no good. I don't want the bad news first. Well, <laughs> I can't wait for that. So what? It's all right. She's arrived in 33 pieces. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what it is then is you don't We've like... We've got them all. <laughs> 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 You don't like being controlled, that's what it is, don't you? You don't like other people being able to impose no, their no, will on you. that's right. I don't like... Uh, rules are all right and they're fine, but if you adhere to them too rigidly, you become the fool that the rules manipulate. And you mustn't do that. What are you, what are you doing now? What are rules you are for fools, you know it. <laughs> you see, they're terrified of you. Is this what Blair's done to you? <laughs> My God, a Labour government took you to war. There I want to see rioting. <laughs> okay. um, let me ask you: Do you miss? Uh, do you miss the the seventies? Do you miss the Sex Pistols years? Do you miss that that no. period of your life? No, because I've done so much since. But do you miss Pill that Public Image Limited? Is a, an incredibly important band you... for me. I've got solo albums. I've got books out. Uh, I'm turning now, at the moment, Rot, No Irish, No Blacks, No Dogs into a film with Penelope Spiris. And Justin Timberlake is Johnny Rotten, I yeah. hope not. But... <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Mr John Lydon. Yeah. Thank you. That was great. Thank All you. Right. Yeah, fantastic. Hang around afterwards and I'll see you back there. All right, mate. Thank you. Bye bye, Roxy! Yeah. <laughs> 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 I had a dream like that once. <laughs> oh, don't be. Oh, just give me a cigarette. It's all right. Uh, now, you know, since we've been off air, one resignation has rocked the BBC.